Hi guys. Well, this is probably the closest thing I am going to get to a spectacularly gorgeous winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in upstate western New York. Uh, where it might actually break 32 degrees today. I've, I'm looking at the weather forecast in Austin, Texas, which is where I should have arrived at two weeks ago just to torture myself. So I should be out there enjoying this uh, rare ray of sunshine on, it is a Monday, January 9th, 2023. And, uh, so I have been pouring through the mainstream media here on a, uh, I guess our second Monday morning in 2023, looking for one story, one story that has anything to do about the collapse of everything and the fact that we're doomed and needless to say, not one story on the mainstream media. And, and understand that the, the Yahoo news bots, you know, I have them, I have them well trained to find stories, you know, for doomers. So anyway, take a wild guess. I am back to medium.com the single most refreshingly honest website uh, on the planet. I think that I did a, a uh, ran a couple of weeks ago from this fellow named Michael Campy. Yeah, Michael Campy, I like this guy. I'm glad to see he's getting uh, new followers here. He did, Michael describes himself, I just do stuff. Sometimes I write, sometimes I scream at the walls, and sometimes I stare outside the window. And anyone who spends any time staring out the window understands uh, we're actually going to mash up two of uh, Michael's recent short essays. So as Michael is screaming at the walls and staring out his window at what's going on on the planet, he has come to two conclusions. <clears throat> Conclusion number one, one day soon it just won't get better. There is going to come a day, and I don't think it's too far away, when things will break down and they will not get fixed. The power will go out and it won't come back on. The water will stop coming from the tap and it won't start again. The stores will begin to run out of groceries, and the shelves won't be restocked. Gas will be in short supply, and then there won't be any more gas. The things that we count on are going away, and they are not coming back. And that is something that you might want to start thinking about. Caitlin Johnstone said in her article, The Day the World Ended, I'm pretty sure I read that out, that quote, The day the world ended began like any other day. People woke up, had their coffee, checked their social media, kissed their loved ones, and went to work. It may not be that abrupt, but it will as we move into 2023 become more and more noticeable. In his book, Collapse Happens Slowly and Then Very Suddenly, Dave Pollard said, I don't know if this is a book or an essay, I'll, I'll uh, read this essay on a, uh, on a future rant. And Collapse Happens Slowly and Then Very Suddenly, Dave Pollard said, quote, <clears throat> And like a human life, it won't be a precipitous health collapse, but a whole series of small shocks and injuries 
just as heart attacks and chronic diseases of the organs lead inevitably closer to organ failure despite expensive surgeries and transplants. So we can expect to see more suffering, more and deeper and longer depressions, currency failures, wars, governmental collapses, and of course, horrific droughts, storms, and other climate shocks that will eventually make civilization's infrastructure too expensive to maintain. We'll just stop trying to repair things that seem certain to break again soon. Close quote. <clears throat> there are an even growing number, there are an ever-growing number of fluffy people fluffy people trying to see if they can capture some market share by writing seemingly endless articles on how we can save the planet or how we can make a difference or how we can make better choices. And the simple truth is we can't. Thank you. The sooner that sinks in, the better. There is nothing we can do. A few years ago, the mainstream climate writers were giving us until 2100. That gave a lot of us an out. <clears throat> it won't happen in my lifetime was something I heard frequently during that period. It was just another aspect of the sociopathic self-interest that was washing over the country. As things sped up and events occurred sooner than expected, that was revised to 2050. That was scarier, but still not soon enough to cause any level of mass panic. It is now pretty well accepted among people, people who are paying attention that 2030 might be a stretch. That is a lot scarier. Only seven years? If you have small children, their lives within the next seven years will be drastically different from what they are now. There will be issues piled on top of issues that will eventually exceed your ability to recover. I've heard that most people have a three disaster limit before they are permanently broken. I know some of those people in Chico, California who were sick, lost their jobs, and then lost their homes in the Paradise Fire, and they were irreparably broken. They were never going to come back, and it drove a lot of them crazy. 30 million new people were displaced in 2020, and there is going to be a projected 1.2 billion climate refugees by 2050, if we make it that long. As the extreme events come at us faster and faster, your chances of being affected go way up. At the height of the AIDS epidemic, there was a sign on the sides of buses in San Francisco that said, within five years, you or someone you know will die of AIDS. And for people who don't know this, my brother did in fact die of AIDS, probably within five years of those signs. I have often thought of updating that sign to read, within five years, your friends and your family will be a victim of a climate change related event. Most of the phone calls I make to friends now are to check in on them after an extreme weather event. I was just on the phone last night trying to reach my friend in the Santa Cruz Mountains. The phone rang and rang. 
These calls are getting more frequent. There are all sorts of reasons and justifications for not wanting to believe that things are really bad, but none of them are valid. Things are really bad, and it just is not going to get better. I don't want to believe that, but it's bad. I don't want to believe that it's bad, but I cannot ignore the facts. I think a huge part of it is that no matter how aware you are of what is going on deep down inside, none of us wants the party to end. It was fun. Not all the time, but most of the time. But it's over now, and we all have to put on our big people pants and admit, and admit that and begin to prepare ourselves and our families and our children for what promises to be a really, really scary future. So, uh... I guess Michael figured uh, if that was unclear that uh, maybe he needed to rephrase it a couple of days la later. So we have an F-bomb warning here. So after he wrote that last one, his next one, uh, we're fucked overload. I feel that there is more than one sword dangling over our heads right now. Maybe you feel that way too? I hope so, because then I won't be alone in this. Of course you do feel that way, because if you are awake, you must feel it. There is so much going wrong right now. You can kind of pick and choose what to worry about. It's a veritable smorgasbord of selections. You could actually assign an issue to a day of the week. Monday, the environment. Tuesday, the economy. Wednesday, societal collapse. Thursday, food crises. Friday, rampaging diseases. Maybe you should take the weekend off. If you did if you did that, you may avoid the WFO or the we're fucked overload. The WFO can fry your circuits pretty quickly. Yes. Fry your circuits game over you're dead. <clears throat> The WFO can fry your circuits pretty quickly, even as little as two of the above systems, if can combined, can produce an almost intolerable level of depression and anxiety. The we're fucked overload is similar to doom fatigue, but has a little more immediacy. I cannot recommend any specific coping strategies as I have not got the whole thing figured out yet. I can recommend the following because they seemed to have helped me. Go for a walk. Simple, straightforward, accessible. Hide under the blankets and pretend you are on another planet where people actually give a fuck about each other. Eat something tasty. I just had a brownie. Eat something tasty and then go for a walk. Kind of a twofer. Throw some large ceramic dinner plates against a brick wall. This has a cathartic and soothing effect on one's psyche. If you have access to an office chair, you can push it around the room and spin in circles while squealing like a pig. 
And we have a Charles Bukowski quote, Some people never go crazy. What truly horrible lives they must lead. Regarding the above, I cannot speak highly enough about just going crazy. It seems to solve so many problems. To date, I have not been able to come up with one single downside. The biggest part of this is that people seem to be surprised every time another chunk falls off of industrial civilization's edifice. I guess maybe it would help if we stopped lying to ourselves and our friends and our families, and if we stopped bickering and whining, especially stop the whining, because that's really annoying. I have friends that live in the Midwest that claim the snowfall in Buffalo, New York, you know, a couple of weeks ago, used to be an annual occurrence where they live. It's a lie, really, because according to at least an NPR article, quote, the scope of the storm has been nearly unprecedented, stretching from the Great Lakes near Canada to the Rio Grande along the border with Mexico. About 60% of the U.S. population faced some sort of winter weather advisory or warning, and temperatures plummeted drastically below normal from the east coast of the Rocky Mountains to the Appalachians, the National Weather Service said. And this unprecedented storm from last year, unprecedented and sooner than expected and never before seen are becoming regular headlines as things spin out of control. It's okay to scream, it's okay to feel kind of shitty, but then you should try to snap out of it. There is no sense wallowing in this unless, of course, your power is out and it's freezing outside and there is no way to get to the store for food and you have to start burning your furniture to stay alive and there is no end in sight then you can feel free to wallow away. If none of the above are currently part of your life, you know, and you can get out there and enjoy it, then you could maybe go out and help somebody with something, give them money or food, or try to make their life a little less intolerable. This, however, must be recognized for what it is. It's an, I want to feel better about myself and not be quite so self-involved strategy. It's not a bad thing because of that. You will feel better about yourself. You will make someone else's life better, but you will not change anything. You will not fundamentally fix anything. You will not stop our inevitable trip off the cliff. But you will feel a little better, at least for a little while. <laughs> Amen, Brother Michael Campy. And uh, with that, the little dog and I, we're going to head out into the uh, our one sunny day. We're going to see the whole time we're up here uh, house-sitting Sandy's place. And we're going to walk out to the end of the driveway and get the mail, which will be the most exercise I have had in days. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, take a walk to get your mail while we still have a functioning postal service. Game over. You're dead. Bye, guys.